If you're already comfortable with making and working with textures, to start channel packing really isn't too difficult, and you could start today. I'll be covering how we can channel pack in various software and other videos of this series, but for this video, it's important that we cover the theory of channel packing so that you can walk away knowing how to do it, as well as why to do it. Let's get into it. Before we start exploring things too deeply, let's talk about why you should care. Textures in current games and film have gotten incredibly complex, thanks to the standardized system of physically-based rendering. With it, the number of texture maps we need to make that all do very specific things has increased accordingly. Well, with more texture resources comes bigger file storage requirements since we need to include every texture for a given model. To offset that a little, we could very easily reduce the image size of some of these textures since some of the effects are less easily noticeable, so we can get away with them being lower resolution. However, that still leaves us with potentially a large handful of textures, even if they are smaller in size. Where channel packing picks up the slack is that we can further reduce the overall memory storage that these images take up simply by reducing the overall number of images that are required to produce the same effects. But how can I reduce the number of images I'm inputting while still keeping all of the required image information? Well, the short answer to that, channel packing. Let's look at the long answer. We all know what pixels are, tiny little squares on our monitors that shine light in the color of red, green, and blue. We call each one of these colors a channel, and each channel contains its own bits of information that tell them how bright to shine independently of the others. So while there technically is only three colors being transmitted, the combination of these three channels at varying intensities allows us to perceive a wide range of colors, allowing us to see colors such as yellow, orange, or pink. Well, it's no coincidence then that we use pixels to display images. And would you believe me if I told you that digital images act very much the same as pixels? Shocking, I know. Like pixels hold bits of information within their channels, Images are larger containers that then store these pixels. Where pixels are the cardboard boxes of color storage, image files are the shipping containers. And can you guess how images store them then? If you guessed channels, you'd be correct. If you guessed boxes, uh, start this video over again. Digital images continue this trend of RGB channels, this time storing red, green, and blue intensities of each pixel into each respective image channel. Now, it really can get confusing with all of this back and forth between image and pixel channels. So what you really need to take away from this is the fact that images also use RGB channels where it stores color value intensities that are used to display the final color we see in an image. But it doesn't store it like you may think. Take note that I have been saying it stores intensities, not colors. An image channel does not store varying degrees of reds, greens, and blues. What it stores are bitmaps that use a range of black to white to determine the overall light intensity that each color channel of a pixel will produce. In other words, an image's channels are grayscale, not color. They represent color intensities, however it's not until all channels are combined do we begin to see the color combination that they represent. All right, Chunk, that's a lot of words you're saying at me right now, but what does any of that have to do with anything? Well, hopefully by now the correlation is starting to form in your mind. Notice how we've been talking an awful lot about channels and how the concept of this video is called channel packing? You've probably noticed that regardless of the PBR method you choose, there are a fair number of textures that are grayscale. And we now know that image channels are also grayscale. With that information, it's not a stretch to think that I can use several of these grayscale textures as individual channels to create a new image. And really as simple as that, we've channel packed. All right, cool, but how do I use that in a game engine? Because there's no way I'm going to be able to use that wacky colored image for my roughness or metallic maps. Packed images are essentially suitcases which we pack up before the trip and then unpack when we get to our destination, being our game engine. A common example of channel packing that you will come across in games is called an RMA map, or Roughness, Metallic, Ambient Occlusion Map. This texture map places these three grayscale images into their respective channels in order to reduce the overall amount of individual textures needed 
to supply grayscale information, which significantly cuts down on memory. Once in the game engine, we will have the ability to use each individual channel of the image for the shader, therefore reducing the overall required image count from three down to just one image. Take note that this in turn adds some complexity to the shader, which could detract from performance, but often this is marginal and the benefits far outweigh any negatives that this could create. Just be aware of performance as you continue to develop your shaders. Another common packed image that you may discover is the albedo opacity map. Now you're probably thinking, hold up, albedo are color maps. Does it not need all three channels to display properly? You were thinking that, right? Well, if we're discussing images, we might be able to recall that they actually offer up a fourth channel being the alpha channel. Here is where we could put our opacity mask or any grayscale image for that matter, and also shows that channel packing is not only limited to entirely grayscale textures. By knowing what we are packing, we can use any combination of grayscale images to develop any sort of packed images that we desire. Well, that's all I really have to say about channel packing. So let's recall their highlights before we close this video out. Channel packing is a means of reducing the amount of total textures to reduce memory, while still providing the necessary texture information. We are able to only store grayscale textures within an image's R, G, B, and A channels, as these channels are grayscale. To use packed textures in a game engine, we need to unpack each individual channel for the shader to properly interpret the texture information. While shader complexity may increase, the benefits of channel packing oftentimes far exceed any negative performance hits, although this is all contextual to your specific needs and projects. This video lays the groundwork for the what and why of channel packing, and in the next few videos, we will be diving into the how.